So Microsoft Planner, as you can imagine, Microsoft developed this project to, to do project planning, timelines and everything like that. And as far as a project planner, it's an okay product. Uh, I think there's some that do a little bit better and a little bit more. But what we found that's pretty amazing is that we use Microsoft Planner for something totally different and it's really good at this. We use it in our meetings and for our meeting structure. And so what we're gonna do over the next couple of videos is actually show you how we use Microsoft Planner to do our actual meetings and our actual functions. And so I'm gonna start that right now. So we have a couple different types of meetings that we run at our office. Uh, and so we plan for different ones. I'm gonna start with a couple of the, show you the different ways that we use it. Obviously you can adapt it to how you use it. First thing I'm gonna start with is actually just the opposite though. I'm gonna show you a complete done uh, planner that has all the bells and whistles on it just so you can see what the end product will look like when we're done. We're gonna break this down and start up very slow, but in the end, this is a project plan that we use and how we use it and what it looks like and how dynamic it can be if you use the product. But let's start off with the really basics. So we're gonna go in and we're going to just create a new project plan. So we're gonna start here and do new plan, right? We're just gonna give it a really incredibly creative name here. We'll keep it as private. We're gonna go into that in a little bit. All right. All right, so this is the basic layout. As you can see, it looks completely different than the blank one. So let's start adding in some of the components to this one. So uh, some of the things that you could do we'll start with is basically name the plane. You saw that we named it. And let's say we want to rename it. Well, all we have to do is just click on it and do right. So you can rename it at any time. You can choose a background. I personally find the backgrounds a little distracting, but you can do a background if you want, um, and then just save it out, right? All right. So you can also pin a plan. Pinning a plan is pretty easy. You just pin it and what it'll do is it'll show up in the top list here as well. Okay, so now we've gone through those adding team members. So the next thing that you do with the plan is you're gonna add people to that plan. And the way you add people to the plan is you go to members and just start typing in their name. And what they'll do is it'll pull up the people in your organization and you just pick them, add them in. And as you add them in, they're now members of that plan. And so they'll be able to work along and see what you're doing. So that's the part of the private part of the plan that's really good. So as you can see, I have different plans for sales managers, service managers, stuff like that. You're gonna have your own individual groups. You might have an HR group, a finance group, whatever it may be, and you're gonna have your regular meetings with them. And that's where those people come into play. All right, I'm gonna remove them just to keep their, their plans uncluttered. Okay, so the main part of, of the plans are these buckets. Now these are different buckets and where you draw them. So we're gonna, we're gonna rename and create a few of these and uh, it'll make a little bit more sense for us. So first thing we're gonna do is we usually create one called new issues. So we have different types of plans, like I said, we're going through. I'm gonna go through what we call our issues plan. So in our issues plan, we go through different buckets that have to do with issues. So we have new issues, we have priority issues, we have on deck, issues on bench issues and then we have on hold and so these are typical buckets that we will have in our in our internal meetings and what it means is basically we have an issue and it's going to fall it's either going to be a priority which means we're going to need to work on it right away it's going to be on deck which means it's next on the bench on hold and so forth. And that's the way that we organize our issues meetings. We have other meetings, uh, goal meetings, stuff like that, and I'll show you those. And then what you do is you create a task. Once you create a task, you hit add task, and it shows up here. And from there, you just create more tasks. All right, now instead of creating a whole bunch, I'm gonna go down to one that I created already here. So as you can see, you created a whole bunch of sample tasks in here just for the sake of time. 
And as you can see, we have different tasks assigned into different buckets. Now, how do we, uh, one of the things that we do <clears throat> is that we can move tasks from bucket to bucket. So we have new tasks, we have this new issue that we're working on. Where do we go? Oh, we're gonna move that one all the way to a hold. Okay, we have this one, we're gonna move over to a priority. All right, and then as you can see, we're moving them up and down. Now what we're doing is when we're having our meetings, we're going through saying, okay, does anybody have any new issues? Okay, here's the new issues. Let's talk about these new issues. Okay, where do those issues fall in our priority? How important are those? Because now we're gonna get into our weekly rhythm and we're gonna start talking about these issues. Okay, what's our priority issues? What do we need? Let's go start going through these one at a time. How are we making progress on those? How are we working through them? Who's doing what? So this is where this organization falls into play is in the meeting itself, this is how we run our meeting. We go through our priority items first, make sure that we catch those. Those are the ones we have to have enough time for. Then we go to the, then we go to the on deck and the on bench as we see fit. But we wanna make sure that we're working on it in order. So we're gonna move them around to make sure that our most important ones are at the top in the priority list. Okay, so now once we have them and we organize and we're in the middle of our meeting, we have our meeting and then we're gonna say, okay, well, what do we, what do, we do once we're, uh, so we're gonna talk about this, this particular issue, right? We're gonna bring it up. When you click on it, you have all these options in here. We're gonna start getting into some of these in the more advanced training, which is the next session, but let's go into the basic options right now. So essentially what we can do is we can add notes in here that says, um, Okay, so, so you can add in notes. <clears throat> you can um, show the notes on the card. And what that means is that when I click it out, you can see now the notes are showed up right here, which is kind of cool. The other one that's really important is checklists. Checklists are the to-do items for this task. These are really, really useful, right? So we're gonna do step one is going to be, um, Okay, so now we have these checklists. Again, we can show them on the card. What does that look like? Looks like this. Now we have these checklists on the card. <clears throat> we can reorder these as well. You can drag and drop them up and down and move them around just like you can the other ones. What's cool is when you show them on the card, you can actually check them off and finish them right from this screen, which is really neat. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, all right. All right, so from here, when you're done with the checklist, what you can do is you can actually complete the whole task. So when you're done, when you check this off, it completes it and it's gone. So it's done. It's moved down here under completed tasks. So it's never totally gone. You can always reference it and see where it is but you can actually uh, clean up your checklist as you're going through. Let's say you don't want it done, it shows back up here again. All right, same thing with the, the it's completed checklist. So basically you can say, okay, we got this, this, is this one done? Yep, it's done, let's move it, complete. All right, excellent. Now let's take one from the on deck and move it over. Excellent. Okay, last thing I wanna show you during this 10 minute uh, webinar is the different types. I told you that we use Planner for different types of meetings. This is our issues meeting. Here's one we have, we have goals. So we set goals for the company and we'll set year goals. What do we wanna do this year? What do we wanna get done in Q1? What do we wanna get done in Q2? What do we wanna get done in Q3 and Q4? And what this allows us to do is have our meeting and say, okay, we're in our planning meeting. How are we doing against our year goal? How are we doing against this, this quarter's goal? and actually focus on those and go through on just those goals. So that's another way that we use Planner. Another one of the goals that we use is actually meeting rhythms. So what we do is when we meet, we have a cadence and we say, okay, we're gonna go through this, 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 this. We have <clears throat> weekly meeting rhythms. Okay, when we meet, 
it's the when we're going on a normal weekly meeting these are the things we want to do when we have monthly meetings these are things we want to do in a month on the monthly meeting these things we want to do in the quarterly meeting and so basically we are able to keep our meeting rhythms going that way how off how do we want to meet you might come up with some other ideas on how you want to use this these are how we use microsoft planner on it like i said our next one we're going to go into a little more detail on how to actually dig in and enhance this now how do we actually assign tasks and use people that's going to be our next one is going to be really cool thank you very much